Alright, just checking out some cat videos. How's YouTube going? Whoa, 999 notifications. Guess we better go ahead and check out some of these comments. Here we go, let's just go ahead and just scroll down. Already seen these comments. Here we go. I'm wondering if you can teach an AI to play out your bird game. Sounds interesting. Let's just leave a comment here. We'll take a look at it. Let's go have a look at Ouchie Bird, see what this is all about. Just loaded off the website here. Ouchie Bird, let the bird fall. So from the looks of things, there's like a windmill spinning around here, some big birds and stuff come down, and they actually get hurt if they hit the if they hit the blades, I suppose. Looks like you just tap the screen and it turns the windmill around. Looks kind of easy. Alright, let's see if we can make an AI that actually can beat this game. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so the first thing we had to do was smash together the game pretty quickly. So I went ahead and built a quick prototype of this. As you can see, pretty rough, there's a bird that falls down, if it gets hit by the blade, it basically just resets, and you're going to slowly get score if it actually manages to get through. Now obviously, you're supposed to be actually clicking and controlling this fan to actually change the direction. If you change the direction, then it's more likely to get through. And surprisingly, the thing that I had the most trouble with here was actually building the collisions. So just so you guys can actually see here, I've actually enabled the visual collisions. So you can see there's pink outlines there, there's polygons. Those are actually the collisions there. So I had to really hack those in pretty quickly. They're pretty rough, but they get the job done, as you can see. In terms of the bird there, you can see just the middle section of the bird actually counts towards the collisions. And in terms of the fan, it's very rough, but it's roughly capturing the blades there. So that's pretty sweet. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started with the AI. Alright guys, so the first step of actually making this AI work is figuring out how we can run this thing in parallel. So what I did was I created four instances of the game just there, like this. Now it's important to think about how you actually do the parallelization here. So for example, I couldn't exactly have four windmills in one game window. That just simply wouldn't work. The most important part here is that you actually control the windmill. So to actually display more than one in a window does not work at all. So the way we actually go about running multiple instances in parallel is literally having multiple copies of the game running. So I wrote this game so that you can have as many instances as you want. For now, we're just going to run four instances, just like this. What we need to do is code in the graphs we've had before, so we can see improvements over time, and so that we can see the brain of the best AI. Alright guys, here's our very first attempt at the AI. So I've gone ahead and hooked this in with a total of four inputs and one output. So just so you guys remember, for these inputs you can feed any values in between the values of negative one and one. Typically, it's probably better to go between zero and one, but for some things, negative one and one works better. So I'll walk you through the four inputs I've actually chosen for this. We have the rotation of the windmill itself. Pretty obvious you need to know about that. We have the Y position on the screen of the actual bird. As it falls down, it changes between zero and one. We have the side the bird is on. So negative one for the left and one for the right. And of course, we have the direction the wind was actually spinning in. So those are the key pieces of information I thought it might actually find useful. Now, if you actually look at this third window here, this AI has been a little bit tricky. He's actually figured out kind of a hack in the game. If you put the windmill at a very specific angle like this and hold it there, the bird on the right hand side can actually fall straight through. So this guy, he's actually figured out a way to hack the game. That's pretty crazy. So it only took, what, 24 generations and he's already kind of cheating? Now obviously, if the bird falls on the left hand side, this strategy ain't gonna work. But he actually figured out a strategy for the right hand side. That's, that's pretty cool, I'd have to say. But let's see if any other interesting trends actually appear out of this. Alright, so I've just gone ahead and reset the actual simulation here. Now I've made two interesting changes here. First of all, the bird is only going to drop on the right hand side. I was really interested with that behavior it actually figured out. The fact that you could put it in this very specific position and would let the bird fall through. So number one, I want to see if we can actually reproduce that. But number two, I've actually added the inputs and outputs up there. So you guys can actually see what this guy's thinking, what he's inputting, what he's outputting. Now straight off the bat here, I can find it kind of interesting. We're getting negative two, we're getting some really weird output values. That's kind of interesting. So maybe we need to interpret these results differently. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward for a little bit and see if we can get into that awesome state where it just lets it fall through over and over and over. Alright, there we have it. So that took about 88 generations, but it did actually find the solution there. That's really, really awesome. So it is actually able to find a solution. You can see it's doing some rotation there. It's figured out based on the height, it needs to do some sort of rotations to actually let this guy through. So it has figured out how to play. That's really awesome. So it actually is able to figure it out from these raw inputs. That is crazy. Okay, now let's talk about the strategy here. What I'm thinking, we can actually implement two AIs here. Let's try the simulation again, but from the left-hand side. If it is able to reproduce this, then what we're going to do is a really interesting strategy. 
and we're going to go ahead and come up with an AI that can actually figure out how to get each of the sides solved. So we're going to have one that solves the right and one that solves the left. Once we've got both of these AIs, we're going to go ahead and save them. Then we're going to combine both of those two AIs and then hopefully, fingers crossed here guys, hopefully if we allow the left AI to control the game when the bird drops on the left and allow the right AI to control the game when the bird drops on the right, we'll have this thing solved. So I think that's a really interesting strategy. I don't know if it's going to work. Let's give it a shot. Let's just start by restarting this with the bird dropping on the left and see if we can find a solution and see if it actually works. Let's give it a shot, guys. All right, guys, I went ahead and changed it to four to the left-hand side, but I couldn't resist. I had to implement the whole solution. So now I'm not sure if it's actually done correctly. It may or may not be done correctly. This is the first time I'm actually trialing this. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set it to be maximum speed. We're going to smash through this. And what's going to happen? It's going to try and solve the left-hand side. Once it gets a score of more than 10, that is like more than 10 of these birds are actually saved, it's going to consider that a solved solution. And then what it's going to do is start dropping them on the right-hand side. It's going to try and find a solution for the right-hand side. And once it solves the right-hand side, it's then going to feed both those brains into all these AIs, and with any luck, it's going to solve both of these together. I don't know if it's going to work. We are going to find out together. This is exciting. So sit back, relax. Let's see if this thing works. Oh my god, guys, it finally happened. 329 generations, and it finally was able to solve the problem. As you can see, there was a huge amount of chance happening there. But the AI actually got there. The solution we came up with to actually combine two different brains has actually, in fact, worked. That is incredible. It's amazing to see when this stuff works. So as you can see, all these guys, they're actually doing it. All unique, it's really awesome. I'm loving this, this is so cool. All right guys, so we did actually get the AI working, surprisingly, but yeah, it's awesome. We are gonna wrap the episode up there. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you guys have enjoyed this, make sure to smash that like button. If you guys wanna see more videos from us in the future, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks a lot for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next episode.